two players who just live their life in and out of Smash all together. Nonetheless, though, speaking of the life of Smash here, it's the life of Star Fox versus Star Wolf. We saw this last time play out pretty terribly for Eon. He got 3 0 by Charlie. Let's see how a different Wolfman is able to handle the matchup. Yep, we'll have to see, but he's doing a good job keeping up on the control here. Ah, the down smash doesn't quite catch him. Again, like I said, K9 really loves to go to for a down smash compared to the other Wolves I've seen. But here we go. Ooh, I like that. The dash back into the dash attack, catching his landing one more time, trying to keep up the control. Gets the back throw, K9 forcing a light situation. I do like the fact that he put in the laser for a little bit of extra pressure. Just trying to hold Eon at the corner, and that's where he wants him. Tries to go sneak in that back as soon as he lands. I like the attempt from K9. Definitely knows I can keep Fox in the corner, keep my opponents in the corner. I can def I, all, all I'm up to do here is read the recoveries. Yep. That dash attack, I mean, so good at being able to get that kill, especially against a character like Fox, who wants to be on the ground, use that speed and aerial pressure. Uh, and short hops to try and get the kill on you. The dash attack is so good at stuffing that up against a character like Fox. Here we go. Okay, stuffs him out in the air one more time, but guess that fairy goes for the dash attack that time around. This time, Eon with the cross up, trying to put in the vortex here. Wolf still surviving here, trying to get another up air. At this point, Eon looking to finally breathe, and at that situation where he wants neutral, he's getting a lot here in terms of momentum if he's able to get the stock in the nick of time. I like that he dashed back, noticed that K9 was committing to his aerial approach, and decided to meet him in the air with the trade. Not quite gonna work out in his favor, but still, 155% on K9, he's gotta find the kill eventually. Otherwise, we're going into the Fox Syndrome that we saw in Smash 4, where if you don't get the setup that you were looking for at 100%, if you keep holding shield, you'll potentially not get the kill until a high percent, like 170, when your opponent finally cracks. Yeah. Definitely showing some kinks in K9's shield for sure. And he's able to deal some solid pressure, but K9 gets the better of that one with the grab. At that situation, I do like the fact that Eon was just slowly trying to ride the momentum here, but K9 finally able to sneak his way back in, gets the good option from the grab. The one thing I do like from K9 though, is how he likes to force his opponents into situations they're not really comfortable with. He throws out laser because the only place left for Eon to go to is below or above. And at that situation, Kana has to guess right or either see where he's going to go and get the punishment. And at that point, he wanted to punish the side B, but he misses his forward tilt a little bit too close. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's not able to quite get the forward tilt to catch him. I mean, for some points of the illusion, it looks like there's some kind of invincibility or intangibility or a hitbox or something that catches other hitbox trying to clank with you. So, unfortunate, because Kana is getting the timing, he's just not quite getting the right spacing where that hitbox doesn't exist. Down smash one more time, going to take out that stock. And you talk about hitbox that exists, man. That hurtbox definitely exists a little too close to the ledge. K9 gets the down smash with that sweet spot so well. Yep. Talk about how Charlie's been working on two frames. K9's been working on putting down smash into overtime. I'll try to catch him in the air, but the directional air dodge at the right time. K9 keeping track of his resources, making sure that he can come back at the right moment. Oh, but doesn't turn around the up smash again. Unfortunate from Eon. He's trying to pull out that pressure, though, but that jump Nair does such a good job of just stuffing out Fox before he can get his option out. Because while, yes, Fox's bear is pretty quick, one of the difficult things is getting in the right position for it, so usually that Nair is already meeting you by yeah. the time you're trying to position into that bear. And for Eon, right, it's getting into the right position and getting that forward smash, conditioning K9 to just try to say, hey, I'm going to go for this out of shield option, I'm going to go for this up to, no, I'm going for forward smash. And that's one thing that I like that Eon was able to finally implement there, able to get the stock. Eon looking for momentum, but each time he does, K9 is there to kind of stop him out there. He likes to slow him down with laser and then go for pressuring options there, especially when he gets the good whip punishes or he's able to just catch uh, Eon in the end line. Oh, the directional air dodge in, he reads it, recognizing he doesn't want to go for one of those high committal recovery options and tacking on the damage very quickly, but gets it met in the air and unfortunate, doesn't get the Mewtwo King angle. I'm sure that he was looking for a canine just waiting and just goes, gets the spacing right, meets you on the other side with a forward smash. No other way to say that, but when the spacing is just right, you get the punishment just right. In this situation though, like you said, he wanted to go for the Mewtwo King, but the one thing to accept here from Eon is, right, he got edge guarded from Charlie all last game with forward tilt, forward smash, down smash, more, like, more, more or less forward tilt a lot. So Eon, he's kind of having a little bit of a post-traumatic stress when it comes to the ledge situation. And for him to try a different option and not play out well, you can tell he's kind of frustrated by getting a charter from Wolf. Yep. Gonna go to Pichu a little bit earlier, um, a little bit earlier than he did last time. Yep. Last time it was pretty much down to the last stock. This time, Charlie understand, um, sorry, Eon understands, hey, you know what, Fox is not gonna cut it for me, let's go to Pichu a little bit earlier here. That might have been my mistake the last yeah. game for going Pichu a little too late. I think he was just trying to experiment to see if the Fox could do it. It didn't quite met it, meet its mark. 
We'll have to see. Tries to go for the ledge trump. Not able to find anything though. For K9, right? This is kind of a, a scouting mission he would have had, right? Is to see how Charlie was able to handle Pichu. For Eon here, so make the mistakes he wasn't able to implement against Charlie. It's an up throw, no thunder, but immediately K9 lands it back here, securing the ledge here, and no play to be made other than a down smash. Let's see what K9 does. He tries to go for an empty hop grab. Reads the same DI again. I'm going to see if Eon just goes for an immediate. DI read the next time around because that's two in a row. But before he can do that, he's got to get off the ledge. I like that uh, low recovery. Make it back to the stage. It's fine. Okay, goes for the blaster. Immediately just trying to close on the loop here. Eon gets a neutral here, putting himself at the ledge. At this situation, all he's does left is to read the roll get up, but he missed that opportunity. I don't know if K9 SDI it out or what, but it's unfortunate that he fell out of that down smash for Eon. Wow, that was really ballsy from K9. <laughs> Just went right underneath that Thunder Jolt to make it back and get the safe recovery out. If he got intercepted, he was basically dead at that point. Yeah. Speaking of being basically dead, if he gets hit by that forward tilt, he might be basically dead. Yon is trying to go for the neutral a little bit deep, but he immediately sees, hey, there's no more opportunities here just to come back on the stage and get that forward tilt. Yep. He missed the first one, but K9 tried to pick an option, and just because of that, instead of going back in the shield, he got caught by the other forward tilt. Gets that back air out of the shield. I mean, one thing for Eon here is he's trying to keep this lead as much as possible because he's no, he knows this lead means momentum. He knows if he loses the lead, he might be losing momentum, and that's what Kanan has been able to take away from Eon. It's the momentum he's always wanted, especially the last game. Kanan just trying to get an opportunity where he's able to punish Eon, but Eon not going to let him have anything. Yeah. I was talking about before how Fox is, wants to position himself correctly to get those bears or up airs, fair, something like that. But this time around, it's K9 that's having a difficult time trying to catch and intercept Pichu in the air, just because his hitboxes don't quite connect where Pichu is in the air. Mm -hmm. So he has to time it differently, but Eon's recognizing that and is keeping up that pressure, not letting a position like that. You saw, he tried to go for the landing bear, but Eon was already in a position where he was underneath it, just because of how small Pichu is. Yeah, and talk about how that works for Eon, right? The roles have kind of slowly reversed here for Eon. He was able to put himself a little bit in advantage against K9, but now K9 turns things around, he gets the back air and puts K9 off the stage. He kind of wanted him to go low, but unfortunately, that timing and that weight allowed K9 to go for that back air and reverse the roll yet again. I feel like each time Eon gets a little bit of momentum, K9 slowly steals it back. Yeah, and you saw it one more time, those back airs not quite meeting their mark just because Peach is so short and it's just so difficult to catch the rat when it's uh, all over the place. Tries to get the ledge control, gets around it. Again, the DI outward. Eon not really going for those immediate thunders. Wow, that I can't believe that Forto killed also. <laughs> yeah, man, I can't believe Peach's Forto just killed him. Man. But hey, yeah. <laughs> something's got to give, and that stock definitely got to give. K9 bringing it to a 1 1. I mean, it's do or die for Eon. He's going to be putting a set point here. Gets a downer, and a second attempt will meet the mark. Eon with 1 1 on the board now. In that situation, right? That's all. That's the all or nothing play. He's got nowhere left to go but up. And that's all, all you're left to go is go down and hit him with those down airs. Not once, but twice to secure that game. Good for Eon to hit, confirm that there into another there, mm -hmm. knowing that the wolf up B is going to take a while to come out. Yeah. And it was one of those difficult situations where if he didn't commit to it right away, then he would have got hit by the hitbox and yeah. put himself in like a stage by situation. Would have been really ugly to deal with. Mm -hmm. But Eon just with the confidence knew that it was going to confirm correctly as he wanted to and be able to take out that stock. Extremely low percent, great comeback for him. And that's kind of one thing we kind of saw from Charlie trying to avoid. Coming from low, he likes to typically go for a couple side Bs or at least an up B from. Center state, I'm sorry, from the usually mid state, mid, uh, mid recovery. All right, well, we're going to the classic biplats here, the Disc Pokemon Stadium 2. At this point, you know, Eon finally a little bit of space to breathe, a little momentum into his hands. Hopefully, he can carry that next game. K9 just trying to use these dash down system, find an opportunity to get a pick, but Eon gets the first blood here in terms of grabs. Oh, uh, at that time, look, Eon doing a good job of chasing K9, how he wants to land and how he wants to get those aerials out. And again, like I said, Eon's doing a good job of keeping himself underneath. And intercepting in the air now, looks like he's starting to go one step further before your aerial even comes out. Let me just go ahead and intercept you in the air because I'm fast enough to do that. Yeah, speaking of being fast enough, he was able to fast enough to get a Tomahawk grab and then put K9 back at the ledge. <laughs> Eon, once again, the momentum in looking into his favor. He's riding well from the last game. Right, that micro spacing from Eon just or just right outside the range that K9 wanted to land with that aerial. Forward tilt comes out. Nothing you could have done about that, I don't think. It's so fast that it just catches your landing so well. And he gets the spike with that thunder and gets 75% onto K9 already. Eon, the 
the pick with Pichu is looking out great so far. Yeah, and like I talked about it earlier, right, he's able to implement some of the mistakes he had against Charlie now against Kane and his groups. The one thing I did like is he's using the Thunder Jolts. He's finally feeling comfortable enough to use those. He was able to use that to hold K9 on the ledge, able to use K9 hold, uh, to keep K9 from coming back on the stage. K9, though, not too far, looking to not be too far behind because he knows doesn't want to let uh, Eon have momentum here. Not for long. Tries All to land on the new chair, and then immediately Eon with the punishment. Your range is just one fish short of that one, especially in the recovery. Yeah, that was difficult for him. He already used a double jump when he was landing. Aeon, again, like I said, is doing a good job of keeping up where Kanai wants to go and where he's used his resources, so he didn't even have to do anything. He didn't go for a risky edge guard, try to potentially make him come back, anything like that. A ball up bears into the down air, almost gets possibly another follow. -up. He misses that one, probably not something if K9 was going to be on the platform. He probably didn't think that uh, K9 was going to be minus on hit there. Or he knew that, and so he just didn't want to follow up afterwards. Try to read an option instead. Oof. The forward throw not going to clank with that side beat this time around. Gets that forward throw in, into the, new, I'm sorry, the dash attack. At this point, K9 looking to finally just steal momentum back, but Eon not going to let it go. He knows he's got K9 on the flip side, and he finally reads the roll on that one there. Gets the up smash, Eon bringing it to the set point in his favor. At this point, he kind of had Kanan frustrated. That's why he kind of went for that roll get up on that situation. Yep. It was one of those, it was very smart from Eon because he recognized before that K9 fell out of the down smash. Yeah. But it sent into a tech chase situation, so he was able to follow up, bait it out, to roll in with that dash forward, and then went back around, got that up smash. And if I were K9, you don't want to go back to the scene of the crime. If you're able to get out, get the victory from surviving that one, man, just run away. <laughs> just run away. But I felt like I said, you know, a little bit frustrated, Eon feeling comfortable enough to go with Pokemon Trainer. Yo, man, he's been switch The Pichu won that game, but I feel like the stage pick they might have chosen could be the reason why he went Pokemon Trainer. I feel like it might be a little bit more comfortable here. Eon talked about how he wanted to go Pokemon Trainer a couple times. He's been practicing. He went Pokemon Trainer for... And he went Pokemon Trainer entirely for one tournament, actually, a while back. I can't remember which tournament, but let's see how things work for Pokemon Trainer. I do personally feel that Pokemon Trainer is Ivasaur and friends, and of course the fan service character has to be Charizard, because you can't really have Pokemon without Charizard for sure. Right. Alright, here we go. Oh, I'll try to get that dash back into a grab. Not able to find anything though, but still great opening combos coming from Eon with the Pokemon Trainer, basic bread and butters. And try to keep up that pressure with the Ivy Sword, but here we go, gets that switch in, keeps K9 on his toes, it wasn't quite expecting it. So he respects the space that the switch gives him. Well, for this one, right, we talk about how the paradigms for Shulk work. Paradigm switching for Pokemon Trainer is, you know, Squirtle's the one getting the damage. Squirtle's the one getting uh, a lot of the combos here. And he's the top three lightest character in the game, so that back air is definitely one of the things Squirtle also gets. Yep, he also gets those early kills on himself, unfortunately. <laughs> just because, like you said, it's so light. But here we go. Eon still trying to keep up the pace here. Yeah, and that's one thing that Eon understands, right? Being an Ivasaur, you get a lot of mid-range tools. You get a lot of good spacing. You got good sweet spots. And you're able to use Razor Leaf as an approach tool. But of course, with Wolf, you have to understand when he's going to go for the Reflector, when he's not going to go for it. And you're able to safely approach. He's going to the Charizard because if you can't get the kill from the up smash, or if he forces can to go for a low recovery, that Flamethrower can be put to work. I feel like the best trainers, they're very good at keeping up control and then once they know that they're in a position to be able to follow with the next moves that they have in mind mm -hmm. after the Pokemon switch it's so good to be able to keep their opponent on their toes because you don't know when it's going to happen exactly. you saw there he tried to go for switch into immediate up smash he had the Charizard up smash already on lock to try and get that kill but he's having a hard time really finding this first stock Oof. going back to Squirtle trying to figure out how he can get potentially edge guard or something but nothing is quite coming to fruition here yeah the one thing I don't want to see Eon sticking to Squirtle too long because of course you're one of the lightest characters in the game, and you will die. Look at that knockback from the dash attack. So Shana Ivasaur might be the better play here, but Eon going to try to write it out, see if he can win neutral. He's got Keenan at 147%. And at this point, for Eon, that back throw is the best thing he was looking for in that situation, right? k so scared to get hit from Squirtle and to lose that stock. Yeah, definitely going to work out there just fine. But here we go. Eon still down 106%. One good intercept the back air, but great. The parries are going to be able to keep this up. All right, well, K9 makes that low recovery here. Eon, a little bit of space to breathe. Gonna stick it to the Squirtle here. I do respect the right. He's looking for percent. He's looking for damage. He's looking for the speed that Squirtle is able to have, especially over Ivasaur. Ivasaur is not that fast, but he's got the good range here. He tries to go for the down air, especially seeing that K9 so comfortable with the ledge. Tries to read the DI from the down throw to get the sweet spot for the Vine Web. 
Yeah, good stuff from K9, DIing in. Once you go straight up on that down throw, it's really difficult for Ivysaur to really follow up with the Vine Whip just because you have to go on either side. Not gonna be able to get anything off of that either. And still having a hard time keeping up the control. K9 still just stuffing out all of Ivysaur's options, and I like that, just staying right outside the Vine Whip. Range off of Razor Leaf, it's an up air. Great confirm, gonna be able to close that out. And I talked about it, right? That's one thing you can use with Ivysaur, that Razor Leaf, those approaches you can make. Eon, take the time to go ahead and make that approach, and he gets the reward for it. That one time, Keenan was not ready for it. Didn't have the reflector. There's the spot dodge, and Eon, can he get some percent here? Only getting seven from the throw. Oh, but withdraw is gonna be able to tank all of the hits possible. Unless it gets footstool, then that's the dangerous part. You gotta respect it, and you gotta just punish what you get out of shield instead. But here we go. I'm definitely respecting the Squirtle pick here, because for Eon, not only is he's one of the fastest of the three, right? He's also able to just move around uh, Wolf, He's able to go ahead and possibly look for whip punishes. Combos as well. Sticking out Charizard may not be the best play because you are a big hurt box and you're only going to have that little bit of extra life lead for so long because you're such a big hurt box. He's able to safely survive with Ivasaur there. Can he make the switch? It's a Charizard to use the up B and he's able to do it in the nick of time. K9 with the roll on the ledge. Back throw. That'll do it for even stocks. K9's last opportunity here at game four. Yep, switches back around 22%. Oh, and he gets that landing fair tech chase situation. Doesn't pick him up with the up tilt, but still just enough time. Able to continue this combo. 58% already on to K9. And this is what I'm talking about. I mean, most of the time you'll see the Pokemon trainers, they'll stick to Ivysaur for a very long time, but Eon loves to commit to that Squirtle. Just trying to take on that guaranteed damage once he knows he gets up opening. And then finally going with the Ivysaur. Potentially trying to get something big here. Get it. Early kill, a confirm or something, or a landing up air. Anything is possible right now. Just like that, that landing up air. One more time. Let's see what he gets here. And he's going to get caught by those fairs instead one more time. <laughs> I mean, for Kenan, right? That's what he's looking for. One more time. One more chance here at game five. And possibly here to go and fight Nico in grand finals. Or in even a hopefully fight Charlie. But Kenan has a lot to work for. Definitely what Eon's looking for is also one more time. He look, goes for the up air because he knows Kenan is going to be above him. Good, oh, empty hop, but unfortunately, can I get the better punishment? Yeah, he got his grab out first. Oh, the force smash! Neither of them actually die on that DBZ moment. Crucial for Eon. Try to bring it back around. Oh, that's a ledge re-grab. Is it gonna be the down smash? Yes, it is. I don't know why he dropped from ledge there. Thought he could could have gotten a mix-up or something, but with the peak, with the PT switch, not gonna work out there yeah. for K or if, excuse me, for Eon that time around. And that's one thing about Charizard that I mentioned earlier, your big hurt box. Charizard actually sticks his head out from the ledge, and he will get caught by that down smash. And not only that, that's not the main reason. He re-grabbed the ledge. You no longer have ledge invincibility. For Eon, what he should have been looking for is the Vine Whip. He would have been able to hang out at the ledge with Vine Whip, but unfortunately, right, I felt like he was just a little bit caught in the sauce, and he made that choice. It's gonna be game five, K9. Back in the money here, one more shot to fight Charlie in the loser's finals in a shot at possibly getting either the be the very worst for him, third place. I'm pretty sure what he wants is nothing but first place. And of course, we all gotta be winners out here. Yeah. Interesting pick going back to the Fox. I don't know if it's like the stage pick or something because the battlefield able to get those ladders a little bit easier. It's interesting because he switched off the Pichu and it did better for him that time around, but we'll have to see. Here we go, putting him off stage. See if he keeps up that control, giving him that space that he wants to try and get that whip punish on those aerials, but he's not able to find anything else except the hip check. Hip check, hopefully, gonna look like a wave check at this point for K9, because you know, they're definitely gonna check about how Eon's moving around in waves. Able to switch back to the Fox here, Eon with a little bit of a comfort pick. He's trying to make his way in. Oh, the landing area. Oh, tries to find the down smash, not able to get anything out of it though. Tries to hit this man with the split, but K9 not gonna roll. He's trying to stay tried and true. Eon, though, definitely tried and true with the, with the lead he has so far. Lightning neutral goes for another air. Definitely something K9's gonna go for an out of shield option. A lot of Wolves loves to go for that. Back throw. And I love the respect that K9 gives him, especially at the ledge. Come to me. I see your side B, and I see your bottom play here. There's my sweet spot down smash. Yeah, that time around, he actually jump towards him, so it made Eon want to go back down low, and that time he was able to get that down smash instead, be able to get that two frame. Very great stuff from K9, but here we go, two stock game. We are here with six minutes on the clock. Smash four stakes here. Okay, immediately Eon just trying to play safely at the neutral. K9 gets the grab. The first strike here in these two fresh stocks. Well, it was two fresh stocks. One thing I do like that K9 knows is like, hey, I gotta keep this Fox in the ledge. I don't wanna get caught in the vortex. Let me move around these platforms. I have to respect how Fox can get me on them. Yep. 
Okay, Kurt's coming for dash attack, but I like it. Nearly sees the space here. Goes for a blaster. Un doesn't get the tech right on the ledge. I'm sorry, on the platform, and Elon able to get a quick follow-up. Both players, comes back to how things were played between Nico and Charlie, right? How much are you winning neutral? How much am I winning neutral? Who gets the better of the interaction? And nearly Charlie, I'm sorry, Eon gets that up tilt into the back air. I want to talk about for a moment. It looked like Eon, he landed on the ground so fast. I think he might have done a wave land. Just right outside of get up attack range and got another four tilt to continue to chase. Unfortunate that he went so low and K9 is going to get that down smash. Eon, he does a good job of improvising on how to elicit reactions out of a tech chase situation. Going to get Just that like up that. smash too. And he's able to catch that landing as well. And now we're going down to last stock here. The loser semis. Winner will move on to losers finals to fight. Charlie. Uh, Charlie, yes. The one thing we are seeing from Kanan is how weary he is on the platforms, right? He knows he's been getting punished from them every single time. The only thing you get here where the platform is matter for him is this platform extension. The fact that Eon has nowhere to be but on the platform after he gets that forward air. So he still the back air just a little bit here, just trying to punish this with the force smash. But Eon finally solidly gets the vortex, doesn't read the directional air dodge. That would have been great for him to follow up from. Oh, he gets that grab. Come off stage one more time. That time, Eon went really high on that. Kanan kind of got the right idea, but not quite going to come to fruition. And now we got another chase potential off to the top. Not going to be able to get it. No. Just the air dodge. Oof. Oh, and again, air dodge. And one more time. That time gets it guaranteed. And Eon going to be able to move on to lose his finals. Kind of gets back from that chair, man, because he knew that was a little bit of a tough one for him. We talked about how the victory.